Algebra 2. Guys, welcome to the wonderful world of logarithms. Yes, that might mean nothing to you right now, but it will mean something to you in the very, very near future. All right, guys, we're in section three today, chapter seven, section three, talking all about logarithmic functions. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of conversions and uh, not a ton of use for the calculator, maybe a little bit, but um, there's going to be a lot as far as you making conversions back and forth. And you're going to see in this video these charts right here. And as it says, copy all the charts. Yes, all the charts, all the examples. All right, because this is important to memorize. Memorize it now because later on they take these conversions and they'll be adding more to them. All right, so what that tells you now is that we're setting a foundation. We're setting the logarithmic foundation that we will be adding to in this chapter. And then we will be able, by the end of the chapter, to solve any type of logarithmic function. All right, and these conversions and these different methods are all going to be presented to you. But I just want to set that foundation, starting right here in section three, logarithmic functions. It's really important. Track with me. All right, so as it says, copy all charts and the examples. This one right here, this is our generic form. So this is like they're not really throwing any real you know numbers at you. But what you do want to see is they're giving you this great, hey, this is what goes here. This is what goes here. This is what goes here. This is the intros to a conversion. Okay, exponential style, logarithmic style. Okay, because you're going to have to go back and forth. They may give you exponential, want logarithmic. They give you logarithmic, want exponential. There it is. Okay, all these examples right here, really good to follow. Okay, all the examples for logarithmic, exponential, here they are. Find the time, guys. Write this down. Don't waste it. Don't let this slip because this is important. More examples and another special property. Take the time right here when we're looking at 1 and 0. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. If the base matches the whole number, you're looking at a 1 for your answer. So their example there is log base 10, okay? Um, and then you got that whole number. Now, if we're looking at the 1, that's where things are going to be changing, okay? So logarithm of 1 versus, in this case, where your base and whole number are the same. So logarithm of 1 always equaling zero. That's one of those important things because it's the exact same concept as saying anything to the zero power is one. Well, anything with a logarithm of one is zero because we're able to go back and forth from exponential format to logarithmic format. All of this might still sound crazy, but take the time to look at these examples. Look at these examples. And now we're going to get into the examples that I work out for you. Okay? So what we're looking at here is an exponential that needs to be converted to logarithmic. So this is the chart that we're looking at. Exponential converted to logarithmic. Notice the location of the numbers that we have here. All right? You have a whole number that becomes your base number. You have your exponent, that becomes your answer. Then in the exponential answer, that becomes the whole number right here. So let's go down to our example. All right, so let's change the color, there we go. So what we're looking at, we have a log, we're gonna leave some space, and let's zoom out. Make sure that you find that conversion. Don't forget. There is your whole number becomes your base. 
here is our whole number so it will become the base now the exponent is what will become our answer and then the answer here is what will become our new whole number here that's the conversion it just it takes time and it takes repetition all right so let's go through another one okay log and here is our whole number again exponential whole number becomes the logarithmic base and then the exponential for that exponent is what becomes our answer for the log and the answer in the exponential is what becomes the new whole number there okay so if we're following our steps it's just a pattern it's a repetition and it takes a little bit of time okay so that's going from exponential to logarithmic use the charts if you need that extra help next one they give you logarithmic we're converting to exponential okay this one might come a little bit more natural okay so this becomes 12 squared equals 144 okay so your base is what becomes the whole number your answer is what becomes the exponent and this whole is what becomes the answer here. Okay, you gotta follow those steps. It's a pattern, procedure, and repetition again and again. All right, this one right here, kind of a weird one, but the pattern doesn't change. One half to the negative third power equals eight. All they want you to do is change the form. You're not solving anything. You're just changing the format. Now this last one, we are solving, okay? Because what we have to do is set it up 25 to an un <clears throat> unknown exponent equals 0 0.04. Now, I'm gonna teach you a little trick with the graphing calculator here. So what I want you to do is type into your graphing calculator point zero four okay and if you don't know what point zero four is as a fraction you just typed in point zero four now hit the button that says math so you hit the math button the first thing you should see next to number one is a little arrow and then it says f r a c for fraction i want you to hit enter then you should see point zero four with an arrow and then fraction hit enter again and you should see now an answer that is 1 over 25 so now we're going to do a little conversion here because 25 to the unknown power actually equals 1 over 25 now this is going to go back and be a little review of exponents and what happens if I'm looking for a whole number to be converted to a fraction. That's going to deal with negative exponents. All right, so think about this. If I had 25 to the 1 power, that's 25. But if I have 25 to the negative 1 power, that would flip the whole number, therefore equaling 1 over 25. So now we know x is actually a negative 1. Anytime you have a negative exponent, it flips the original number, and then you would apply the exponent. So what this means is that 25 to the negative 1 actually equals 1 over 25 to the first power, which is 1 over 25. 
So that's how we come to our solution there with a little trick from the calculator. Okay, that's what I got for you guys. That covers our section three video, introing logarithmic functions. All right, ask questions if you got them. You guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.